My name is Eleanor and I'm the Education Manager at Benjamin Franklin House. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us um, for this week's virtual live science class. The topic for this week is all about Ben's Glass Harmonica. Now we're really looking forward to having your questions and comments during this session. If you're watching live, there are two ways that you can ask a question. The first way is to use your raise hand button. So if you tap the screen or if you click your mouse, then you should see a selection of icons come up at the bottom of the screen and one of them will look like a little raised hand and if you press that then my friend Caitlin who also works at Benjamin Franklin House will be able to um, unmute your microphone and then you can ask a question over the audio and I'll do my best to answer it. The second way that you can ask a question when you're watching live is to use your Q&A button. So once again if you tap the screen or click your mouse you'll get the icons coming up and one of them will have two little speech bubbles. And if you click this Q&A button, then you can type your question and Caitlin will read it out for everyone to hear. And again, I'll do my best to answer it. So we're recording today's session. And if you're watching it later on YouTube, you can still ask questions by writing them in the comments and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. You can always ask me questions as well by sending an email to education at benjaminfranklinhouse.org. But let's get on to the story of Ben Franklin's glass harmonica. Now Benjamin Franklin invented this instrument when he was living at 36 Craven Street in London. On your screen at the top you should be able to see a little drawing of this house and it's the house we now call Benjamin Franklin House after its most famous residence. If you haven't been able to visit the house before, we hope that we'll be able to welcome you when we reopen. In the meantime, you can find out lots more about both Benjamin Franklin and the house by visiting our website at www.benjaminfranklinhouse.org. If you go to the education page, you can even download a PowerPoint, which will tell you all about Ben's life and the many interesting things that he did. And there will also be more details of the other classes we're going to be holding and even recordings of any classes we've had already that you might have missed. So do check that out. But back to the story. So let's find out more about what the inspiration behind Benjamin Franklin's glass harmonica was and also the science that was behind the invention of it. Because um, when Benjamin Franklin came to 36 Craven Street, it was in 1757. And he, that, at that time, he was 51 years old. And he mainly came to London as a diplomat, so to do politics, but he also carried on doing his science. Now, not long after he arrived in London, he went to another city called Cambridge. And there he saw a concert. And at that concert, a musician called Edmund Delaval played what we call the musical glasses, or some people call the musical harp. So on your screen now, you should be able to see some images of the musical glasses. They are wine glasses, which are different sizes and also filled with different levels of water. And the player will play them by um, wetting their finger and then moving it around the rim. I wonder if any of you have seen people play this before. Maybe some of you have even tried it yourself. And we're going to be coming back to the musical glasses at the end of the lesson when I start doing some demonstrations. Okay, so um, I wonder if any of you have an idea of what might have been some problems with this instrument, because when Benjamin Franklin went to hear this concert, he loved the sound, but he thought there were some problems. He thought it wasn't very practical and he was always trying to improve things. So he wanted to try and do that. Has anyone got any ideas of what might have been some problems with this instrument? If you think how you had to play it by moving your fingers and also how you'd have to pack it away to move it around the country. Okay, I'm calling on Irene, who is gonna answer the question. Hello, Irene. Hello, I think it's impractical because um, it's very hard to travel, it will be very hard to travel with the glasses um, if they had the water in it because um, 
the, the water would spill out and if you didn't have the water in it it would be hard to find which um place you needed to um how far up you needed to fill the glasses fantastic it's definitely difficult to travel with thank you so much irene i wonder if there's anyone else who would like to add anything a couple of other ideas so um, because they're made of glass uh, glass musical glasses or the glass harp are very fragile so they can break easily and also it's quite difficult to play I think it would get very tiring if you're having to move your hand over that big area so it takes up a lot of space as well so just a few things a few problems that Benjamin Franklin wanted to try and solve when he came up with his glass harmonica So on the screen now, you should see a few different images. On the left, there's a painting of Benjamin Franklin playing the glass harmonica. In the middle, that's a photograph of Franklin's original harmonica, which is actually on display at the Franklin Institute Museum in Philadelphia. And then on the right, we have two very famous composers who I'm going to come back to in a little bit. So let's hear a bit more about how Franklin went about making the glass harmonica. So after the concert, came back to London and in 1761, he worked together with a glass blower who was working in London, so someone who makes glass. He was called Charles James and with him he was able to make this series of glass bowls and you may not be able to see very clearly in these pictures but we will see more in a moment. Um, they have their different sizes so they go from large to small. And then the glass bowls were um, stacked inside each other and then all mounted on a, a metal rod. And that, that rod was able to rotate um, by use of a foot treadle, which is what you should be able to see um, Benjamin Franklin's foot resting on in the painting. So he would um, put, uh, move his foot up and down and then that would make the, the glasses spin round. So, um, because the glasses, the rims of the glasses, where you had to make them make them sound, were closer together, it was possible to play several notes at once, and that way you could make a harmony, which is when you have several notes together. And in fact, that's where the name for the instrument, the glass harmonica, comes from, because the word for harmony in Italian is armonia. Now, in the middle picture, you should maybe be able to see that there are some colours on the rims of the bowls, and those were to show the different notes that they would play. So Benjamin Franklin had made the um, instrument easier to carry because you could pack it away in the wooden case that you see. Um, it was also much easier to play um, because the bowls were stacked inside each other, the rims were closer together, and that was easier for the player and also it was less tiring because rather than having to move their fingers around the bowls would move for them because of the foot treadle. Now um, when Benjamin Franklin first invented the glass harmonica it was very popular. His wife who was called Deborah described the sounds it's made as being like the music of angels and lots of famous composers really liked it as well. So the, um, the two composers we have on the right of the screen, on the top there's Beethoven, and then at the bottom there's, there's Mozart. Um, they're very famous. And now I wonder if anyone can explain to us what, what a composer does. Why might they have been interested in the glass harmonica? Is there anyone who'd like to raise their hand to help us with that question? We have two raised hands, um, so I will go with um, the first being um, Marcia Balasciano. Hello. Do you know what that job means? What you do? Hello. Hi. 
Oh, don't worry, that's fine. I think we had another raised hand, so we're going to see if, if someone else can help us out with that answer. Thank you. So uh, I am calling on Irene again. Hi, Irene. Hi. Um, I think that um, Ludwig, uh, um, Beethoven and Mozart would have um, liked the harmonica because um, they were composers, which meant that they write music. So they would have liked the class harmonica um, because it provided quite, well, it was an instrument and um, it, it's a very, um, it's a, not exactly a normal <laughs> instrument. And so I think they would have liked it because it's quite not like rare. Brilliant, thank you so much for your answer, really detailed. Exactly, so composers um, write music uh, that musicians can then play, and both Beethoven and Mozart wrote for the glass harmonica. And it was like only composers from the time that wrote music for it. It was very popular to begin with. But unfortunately, after a few years, um, the glass harmonica started to fall out of favor, which meant that less people were playing it. And this was a lot to do with a man called Franz Mesmer. So let's find out a bit more about him. So on your screen now, you should see a portrait of Franz Mesmer on the left. And I'll explain what the other picture is in a moment. So Franz Mesmer was a German doctor and he knew Mozart and also met Benjamin Franklin. He met Benjamin Franklin when he was living in Paris, which is where Ben went after his time in London. And uh, Mesmer became interested in the glass harmonica in his medical practice, so he said that he was using the instrument to hypnotize people. And he called that type of hypnotism animal magnetism. And the picture on the right is from a little bit later, so in the 19th century, is someone trying to use the hypnotism, the animal magnetism. Now, Benjamin Franklin wasn't pleased about this. He didn't believe in the science um, behind Mesmer's ideas, but other people got a bit scared about it, so they didn't want to listen to the glass harmonica so much anymore. Um, there were some other reasons that, um, that people stopped listening to the glass harmonica. There were some rumours that if you listened to it or played it, then it could make you go crazy. Uh, don't worry, those weren't true. And if you're interested in finding out a bit more about this character, Franz Mesmer, there's actually a really great uh, children's book called uh, Mesmerized, How Ben Franklin Solved a Mystery That Baffled All of France, which, is which was written by Maria Rockcliffe, and the pictures were done by Jacopo Bruno. And we, we sometimes refer to Mesmer without realizing it today, because the word mesmerize, which people sometimes use to mean hypnotized or fascinated, comes from his name, from Franz Mesmer. Now, luckily, the glass harmonica has started coming back into fashion. It's become more popular again. And there's a company in America called Finkenbeiner, which is making modern versions of the glass harmonica. So this is like the one that we have at Benjamin Franklin House, which you can see on the screen now. It's similar to the one that Franklin would have played, but there are some differences. So rather than having the colors on the rims to show the different notes, you should be able to see that some of the glass bowls have a gold rim, but not all of them. And that's because the gold rims are showing the sharps and the flats, the sharp notes and the flat notes. Now, I don't know if anyone um, tuning in plays the piano, but the sharp and flat notes look a bit different on a keyboard as well. I wonder if anyone knows what the sharp and flat notes look like on a keyboard. So I'm going to call on Bruce. Hello. Hello. Hi, thank you so much for joining. Were you going to tell us about the sharp and flat notes on a keyboard? Uh, Is Mozart friends with Benjamin? Friends of Benjamin, fantastic. Yes, we're all friends of Benjamin here. So mm -hmm. on, a, on a keyboard, you have some white notes and you have some black notes. Do you know which, yep. ones, are, which ones are the sharps and flats? Yep. Which ones are they? 
the black and blue and blue. Exactly. Thank you so much. So the gold one, the gold rimmed bowls on the harmonica here, a bit like the black notes on a uh, on a keyboard. Fantastic. Thank you so much for participating, everyone. Um, so also, rather than having the foot treadle that we saw in the painting a little earlier, um, our version, our glass harmonica has an electric motor. So that will spin the wheel that you can see in the picture, and then that turns the rod and the bowl. So it's even easier to play. And I think Ben Franklin would have approved of this addition to his invention because he was always trying to improve things. That's how he came about to make the glass harmonica. And also he was very interested in electricity. Remember him as one of the fathers of electricity. Now you're probably all wondering what the glass harmonica sounds like. So hopefully I'm going to be able to show you a video now of Caitlin, who you've seen as well, um, playing the glass harmonica we have at Benjamin Franklin House. Now, um, as I said, it's become popular again and modern musicians play it. And Caitlin's actually going to be playing the music from a very famous film, or maybe I should say series of films. So if you recognize where it comes from, do raise your hand and we'll, we'll call on you to let, let the rest of the class know. I wonder if anyone recognized that tune. Remember, you can either raise your hand or if you prefer, you can press the Q&A button and write an answer. Uh, I'm gonna call on Irene again. Hi Irene, thanks so much for being such a great participant. Um, I think I think the um, the tune comes from Harry Potter. It does exactly. Well spotted. Um, so it's Hedwig. Thank you. It's Hedwig's theme from Harry Potter. Brilliant. So now we've learned lots more about Ben Franklin's glass harmonica. Let's think a little bit about how it relates to other instruments. Um, on the screen now, you should see um, some pictures, some drawings of lots of different instruments, and they've been grouped into the, the families of instruments, that's how we, we group the different instruments. Now, I took these images from the, um, an app made by the Britain Peers Foundation, which is the Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, which is a great place to find out more about instruments and music. So let's go through the four families. So at the top on the left, we have the string family, and that includes instruments like the violin and the cello. Then at the top on the right, we have the woodwind family, which includes instruments like the flute and the clarinet. And at the bottom on the left, we have the brass family with instruments like the trumpet and the trombone. And then lastly, at the bottom right, we have the percussion family. So all the different sorts of drums and also other instruments like the tambourine. So we're going to hear a little bit more about each of the families and I'm also going to play you a clip of music which is played by one of the instruments in each group and we're going to see if anyone can identify, can tell me which of the instruments it is. So the string family, um, you make music with the string family by either plucking or stroking the strings and you would stroke it with something called a bow. So I'm going to play you one of those instruments and do raise your hand if you recognize it or write something in the Q&A box. Okay, we have a raised hand from Bruce again. Fantastic. Violin. Very well done, it was the violin, fantastic. So now we'll think a bit more about the woodwind instruments. So to make music with the woodwind instruments, you need to blow through them. 
And once again, I'm going to play you a clip of a woodwind instrument and do raise your hand if you recognize it. Yeah, calling on a Bruce again. Clarinet. Very good, very good guess. It was close that it's actually a flute, but they do sound quite similar. Thank you. <laughs> um, now the brass family, you also make music with the brass family by blowing through them, but they're all made from brass, so a different material which makes a slightly different sound. So that's why we group them together. Let's have one of those instruments now and see if we can identify it. You've got the images and the names on the screen to help you. So what do you think this is? Okay, going to, oh, um, we are gonna go to Irene. Um, I think it's the horn. Really good guess. Again, they do sound quite similar. This was actually the trumpet, this one. Oh. But well done for guessing. Thank and you. The last, thank you. And the last uh, group, let's have a look at the percussion instruments. Now this is, um, so they're all made out of all different types of materials, but you normally make sounds with them by either uh, tapping them or banging them or shaking them. So this is quite a quick clip of one of the um, percussion instruments. So let's see if you can identify it. I'll try it again. Yep, I'm um, going to go to Bruce again. It's a xylophone. It is a xylophone. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who took part in that. Um, so um, now we've heard more about all these groups. I wonder, there's actually a, a very um, important instrument that's missing from the screen, and often it's the instrument that lots of children learn to play first. Uh, if you think you might know, do let us know by raising your hand or typing in the Q&A box too. Uh, so, um, Jacob and Yassine has, has said piano. Exactly, the piano. So let's have, let's have a look and I'll explain why I didn't include it on that, on that screen. So the piano is a bit trickier. Most people would say the piano is in the percussion family because you tap the keys to make the sound. But inside the piano, there are actually strings. You can just maybe just about see that on the reflection of the lid of the grand piano, which is the picture on the left. Um, so most people say it's percussion, but some people would say it, it also belongs to the string family. Now on the right, there's another instrument which is like a piano, but it's, it's got a different name and it actually was around before the piano. I wonder if anyone knows or wants to have a guess at what that instrument might be. Oh, we have a raised hand from Bruce again. Our, uh, oh, I can't tell. Our speaker. No. The harpsichord. Well done. And Benjamin Franklin actually played the harpsichord as well as the glass harmonica. So he really loved his his uh, instruments, his music, and um, the glass harmonica was part of the percussion family as well. Um, so now we've, we've looked lots at the glass harmonica and how it relates to other instruments. I'm going to get to the demonstration part of the lesson. So I'm going to be using demonstrations that hopefully will help you understand the science behind the sounds of the glass harmonica and also will help you to make some music at home. So you can either recreate these demonstrations as we go along or you might want to wait until the end of the video and then try them at the end. So for the first demonstration, you're going to need three glasses of water. Now there needs to be different levels of water in each glass. So we're going to try and make the sounds that the musical glasses would make, although I haven't got quite as many as a professional player would have. 
Now it's really important to do this demonstration that you um, ask permission from your adults to use the glasses and also that you are really careful when you're handling the glasses because you wouldn't want anyone to drop them and break them. You're also a little bit later going to need a metal spoon. So I am not a professional uh, musical glass player, so bear with me, but I will show you how you should be able to make sound from the glasses. Now, hopefully you'll be able to hear it over the, over the audio. Um, as I try and make the sounds, have a think about how the sounds are changing between the glasses. So like I described earlier, you need to dip your index finger on the hand that you write with into the water and hold the glass steady at the bottom with your other hand. And then you need to start rubbing your finger around the rim of the glass. Okay, now let's try the middle one. And the last one, which has the least water in it. Now, I don't know how well the audio came through on your end, but did anyone, if you could hear it, did anyone notice what, um, what the difference was between the different glasses? I'm gonna call on uh, Irene. Um, the difference between the glasses was the first, the, the highest one, uh, the one with the most capacity of water was yeah. lower, was the lowest and the one with the least capacity of water um the noise was the highest fantastic you're exactly right and and do you know the word we use to describe whether the, the sound is high or low it's beginning with the letter p um pitch thank you exactly what really well explained so just like irene explained as um as there was more water in the glass, the pitch of the sound was getting lower. And I'll try and explain now why that's happening. So all sounds are vibrations. If you put your hand here where your voice box is when you're speaking, you should be able to feel it vibrating. So when I'm rubbing my finger around the rim of the glass, I'm making it vibrate. And because my finger is wet, it's slipping and sliding over the rim of the glass which is making the glass vibrate at just the right amount, at something we call the resonant frequency. And um, the reason that the pitch then changes with the different amounts of water is that if I have more water in my glass, that glass is going to be heavier. And if the glass is heavier, it's harder for it to vibrate, which means that it vibrates at a lower frequency, and that means the, the pitch of the sound is lower as well. Now, I hope you're going to be able to um, have fun making some sound like this with the glasses. Don't be um, frustrated if, if you're finding it difficult to make a sound. It is quite challenging and it takes a bit of practice. It normally works best if the glasses are, are clean and your hands are really clean as well. I'm going to show you another way that you can make sound with the glasses, which is a little bit easier to do. So for this, this is why we need our metal spoon. So um, I'm going to be tapping the glasses and with this I need to make sure I'm doing it really gently and carefully to make sure that uh, I don't break the glasses. So once again we should see that the glass with let the least water is going to have the highest pitch sound. Hopefully you were able to hear that. And when you're getting to have a chance experimenting with that at home, you could always add more glasses. You might want to test the glasses themselves being different sizes. Because remember, with Benjamin Franklin's glass harmonica, it was the size of the glass bowls themselves which changed the pitch of the sound. So the bigger the bowl, the lower the pitch of the sound. And when you're experimenting um, with making sounds in this way, way, you might want to think about how you could record your tunes you come up with. And you could do this using colors, a bit like how the first glass harmonicas 
had colored rims to show the different notes. So I've got three, uh, just with some paper and some colored pens, but it could be colored pencils or crayons. I've made three different labels here. So I'm gonna make the high note blue, the middle note green, and the low note red. So now I've given them a color, this means that I can record the melodies that I come up with. So when I was experimenting earlier, I came up with a melody and I wrote it down using the colors. So this is a little bit like how we might record two phrases of music. Now from this, we can only see the melody, so the, the pitch of the notes we want you to play. If you wanted someone else to play your tune, you can always clap them the rhythm you want them to do. So I'll clap you the rhythm I'm going to play in a moment, and then I'll play you my, my tune that I've recorded in this way. So my rhythm is... Okay, and now I'll play you that so you can hear the rhythm and the melody together. Okay, so I hope you'll be able to have some fun um, trying that at home. Uh, before we go, I'm going to show you how to play, uh, how to make one more instrument at home. So the musical glasses are a type of percussion instrument. You probably guessed that because we were, we were tapping them with our spoon. Um, but I wanted to also show you uh, a kind of string instrument that you can make at home. So for this demonstration, you're going to need a small container. It could be plastic or cardboard. I've got one of these food containers, but you could use an empty tissue box as well. Um, and then you're gonna need some rubber bands. And if possible, try and have rubber bands that are, that are different thicknesses. So because my rubber bands are quite small, I'm going to put them around the middle of my container, but you might want to put them going this way instead if you have longer ones. Now, we spoke about how the pitch of the sound in the glass changed because the glasses were getting heavier. With the strings, if the strings are thicker, the sound, the pitch of the sound should be lower. So again, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but this blue string is the thickest, in the middle, the highest. So there you've made your own uh, string instrument at home and as an optional extra you can add on um, a small cardboard tube to help you hold your instrument it also makes it look a little bit more like the traditional string instruments like a violin or a guitar so I've got just a small cardboard tube that's from inside a toilet roll and then you can just attach that to the top of your instrument using some sticky tape Okay, and now I have my very own string instrument. So that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us and everyone that's been contributing with their questions and answers. Does anyone have any questions before we end the class today? So we have one raised hand from Bruce. I wanted to ask, I, can I have, I had a pee break, so how do you make the um, the string instrument? Absolutely. I'll quickly recap, and also we're going to be um, uploading this video onto our website, so if you wanted to go back and, and check anything or watch anything again, then you can do that. So I'll just stop sharing my slides so you can see a little bit bigger. Um, so you need to take a small box, could be a plastic box like this or a cardboard one, and then you just need to put the rubber bands around it. So my rubber bands are small, so I put them this way, but you could have them going along this way as well. And then I've taken a small cardboard tube, I've just made some cuts at the end to fold over, and then I've attached that to the top of my instrument with some sticky tape to make my string instrument. 